2020 can be your greatest year yet. How? With the right tools to succeed. Introducing the Creflo Dollar Ministries app, a place to connect, learn, and be inspired anytime, anywhere. Get free content, resources, and tools to change your world. Don't wait. Search and download the Creflo Dollar Ministries app on any device right now. God's plan for your year is big, and it begins with clear vision. Connect with us now. Your greatest year starts today. system determines how you live and you spend no time you know investing in am I believing right because if you're not eventually it's gonna affect the way you live and that's so backwards and that's what the enemy does he, he, he gets us focusing on things backwards man you're you're concerned about living right you're not believing right but how you believe gonna determine how you live so if I want to live right, I got to go and examine my belief system. Then it brings me to right living. Of the year, the 2020 Change Experiences are coming to a city near you. Join Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar in Birmingham, England, Dallas, Texas, Chicago, Illinois, and Birmingham, Alabama. You don't want to miss this power-packed event. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. See you there. Ladies, are you ready to find your worth? Join us at the 2020 Worth Radical Women's Conference, March 19th through the 21st at World Changers Church International and learn just how valuable you are. Once you find out your worth, you will stop giving out discounts. Join Taffy Dollar, Creflo Dollar, Sarah Jakes Roberts, D.D. Freeman, and special musical guests Todd Delaney, Miranda Curtis, and Demita Chandler. Mark my words, this is going to be epic. Join us for three life-changing days at the 2020 Radical Women's Conference, March 19th through the 21st. Reserve your seat today at taffydollar.org or text RADICAL to 51555. Cleveland, Ohio, get ready for Change Experience 2020. For one night only, join Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar at the Huntington Convention Center. There's a mighty wind getting ready to blow through your household, getting ready to blow through this church, getting ready to blow through your life. You better get ready, honey. Put your seatbelt on. Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. We have to be certain of God's love and God's value for us and God's plan for us. Because if we're certain of that, then we can begin to turn fear on its ugly head and not allow it to come in and rob from us another day of our lives. God has something in store for you. Don't let nothing get in the way of it. I don't care if all your friends say they don't want to go no more. Come by yourself. Matter of fact, you ain't never alone because God always 
always with you. The session time is 7 p.m., so don't delay. Register today for free while there's still time. For more details, visit CreploDollarMinistries.org. Welcome to World Changers Church. We're excited that you're here. When you stepped through our doors, you didn't just walk into a building. You walked into a family. And no matter who you are, where you come from, or what you look like, you're welcome here. We believe that God is love and that His grace rekindles lost passions, repairs broken dreams, and fills empty lives. We believe that a life in Christ is not a formula of rules and laws, but a moment-by-moment -moment relationship with Jesus. His love for you is infinite and everlasting, without pretense, conditions, or discrimination. We can't stand religion, but we love God. And if you're not sure what the difference is yet, we can't wait to show you. So, let's get started. Welcome to World Changers Church. People like you change the world.
fountain that drowns sorrows. There is an ocean, and it's deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising. Come on.
on, let's declare. You, Lord, you are worthy. And no one can worship and you. No one can worship you for me. For all the things you've done. For all the things you've done for me. See, you don't know my story. No one so you don't know my worship you for me. See, this is what we're here to do. Here's my worship. We're just here to give God the glory. All of my worship. And give him the worship for who this he is. This is my worship. Oh my. All of my worship. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. in their spirits on today for all the things you've done for me you've done for me see no one hallelujah
to give us distractions in, in our health and our finances we really can depend on the Holy Spirit to guide us to all wisdom and understanding about every situation but there's sometimes we just have to get to that quiet place like remove all the distractions remove the bills remove the doctor's report and just get to that quiet place where God can minister to your heart so he can remind you that he came and died for you that in three days he rose again with all power in his hand and he's seated on the right hand of God and that power that he rose with he's given it to you through the Holy Spirit but sometimes we got to get to that quiet place in God Away, away from the noise Alone with you Away, away from the noise To meet with you Nothing else matters. This is my one design to worship you. I live to worship you. I live, I live to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. To worship you, Mama Mashada. Oh.
about He knows all about Say oh He's able to heal He's able to restore He knows all about the troubles Your declaration. Withholding nothing. We're going to set the week with this declaration. I surrender all. Everything I give. Withholding nothing. 
Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Lord, we worship you, we honor you, we praise you, we magnify you, Lord God. This place, this atmosphere was created for you to dwell, for you to move, for you to heal, for you to deliver, for you to set free. Lord, we receive everything that you have planned for this moment, in this second, for this day, Lord God. We receive your goodness, your love, your mercy, your kindness, your peace. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken in our lives, Lord God. All is well with us today, Lord. All is well in our household. All is well in our finances. All is well in our relationships, Lord God. All is well, Lord. We receive it. We believe it. We don't struggle to receive what's already freely given to us by you, Lord God. You're good, only good, only good, only good, only favor, only increase, only promotion, only prosperity, only healing, only wholeness, only wellness, only goodness, Lord. We receive it. We stand in it. We don't move from it. We receive your love. We are your love. We express your love. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. You haven't forgotten about us. You are our God. We are your people. We will not let a rock cry out in our place. We will not let a rock cry out in our place. We will cry out, Abba Father, healer, provider, our righteousness, our sanctification, our deliverance. All things are in you, created by you, for you, Lord God. Rest is ours. Peace is ours. Assurance is ours. We receive it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you shout amen? Amen. amen. A good father with plans to do you good and to make you happy, to overrun you, overtake you, blow your mind. He's an awesome wonder. He wants to blow your mind. Do more than you can ask, think, dream, or imagine. You think it, he wants to do more. You believe it, it's more than that. He's good. You're in the right place today to receive all that God has for you. But before we get started, we want you to take 60 seconds and go and greet your neighbor, somebody you did not come with, somebody you do not know. Say, hi, welcome to church. Good to meet you. My name is, and you have 60 seconds on the clock starting now.
You may return to your seats. It's good to be here. You're in the right place. So we have some special guests in the building today. So first of all, if you're here today and you're visiting with us, and it's your very first time being here at World Changers Church International College Park, we want, and all around on the internet, all of our fellowship locations, we want to ask you to stand right now for just a moment, not so we can embarrass you or make you feel weird and awkward, but just so we can acknowledge your presence as our special guest here today. Give them a warm World Changers Nation welcome. Just remain standing for just a moment. Our ushers have a, a visitor's pamphlet that they're putting in your hands. There's some information we want to get from you just so we can know a little bit about you. And when you exit on the right side, there's a visitor's desk. If you can return the little slip of paper in there. Also, we want to get a free gift in your hands on behalf of our pastors, Pastor Dollar and Pastor Taffy, just to say welcome. We hope it's not the last time that you visit. Next time you come, bring 20 friends. And... Um, We'll see you again next Sunday, next Wednesday, Friday, whenever. We welcome you. We know it's not an accident that you're here. We believe it was ordained before the very foundations of the world that you would be here. So thank you for showing up. We appreciate you, and you may be seated. Give it up for them one more time. We also have another special guest in the building running for Fayette County Sheriff, the only Democrat that's running, that's important for you to know, <laughs> Mr. Chris P. George, are you here? Mr. P. George. So if you live in Fayette County, make sure you make your way to the polls, make sure, sure you cast your vote. Remember Mr. Chris P. George, he's here, he's representing you, representing us in Fayette County. So just keep him in mind as you cast your votes. We appreciate you, sir, for being with us today. You know, God is, is funny, or maybe he's just funny to me, or maybe I'm just funny and I think stuff is funny. But he has a way, just when I think I know him, just when I think I have God figured out, just when I think I know the path for my life, the plan for my life, and I got it written out, and I have my 50 goals, and I'm gonna do this and do that, God is the God of the curveball. He perfected the curve ball, the breaking ball, the ground ball. You're not going to figure me out. Because you're going to have to keep seeking me. Because if I gave you the whole plan for your life, at one time you would go away from me. You would leave me. So I give you a little bit at a time so you have to keep relying on me. He said this in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, in verse 5. He said, let your character, your moral essence, your inner nature be free from the love of money, shun greed, and be financially ethical, being content with what you have. For he has said, I will never under any circumstances desert you. Yeah, it's unfamiliar to you. Yeah, you thought you had it figured out. Yeah, I'm asking you to take a chance, but I will never leave you. Yeah, you don't know what's next. You don't know what's coming. You thought you had it figured out. I am with you. I told you to do this. I told you to do that, and you're afraid. Don't be afraid. I am with you. I support you. I have your back. I won't abandon you. It says here, nor give up, nor leave you without support, 
nor will I in any degree leave you helpless nor will I forsake you or let you down or relax my hold on you. He won't even relax his hold on you. Well, God has left me. He hasn't even relaxed his grip on you. He said, relax my hold on you, assuredly not, so we can take comfort and are encouraged and confidently, confidently say, the Lord is my helper in time of need. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Why are you afraid of people, of mere men, mere humans, when God has got your back? Not only your back, he's gone before you. So not only is, does he have your back, he's ahead of you. Not only is he ahead of you and behind you, he's around you, surrounded you. You're well, you're covered on every side. No fear. No fear. God is with you. Amen. Do you receive that? Do you receive that? So if you're here today and you need prayer for anything, we want to agree with you with pray in prayer. Our altar counselors are coming now. We just want to touch your hand. We just want to hug you, agree with you, pray with you, give you some encouragement. If you don't know what's next, what's happening, what's going on, and you just need somebody, that's why we're here. That's why we have church and community, so that we can be there for one another. So if it's you and you're here and you need prayer for anything, you can come now. We'll be happy to agree with you at this time. You made a way. When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You, you made a way And we're standing here Only because you made a way You made a way When our backs were, when our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was Lord, you, you made a way, and we're standing here only because.
being a very present help in a time of need. We thank you that you hear our prayers, that you answer our prayers, and your answers to our prayers that we pray according to your word are always yes and amen. We receive it now in Jesus' name. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. I won't fear. I won't fear. Filled with anointing. Filled with anointing. My cups overflowing. My cups overflowing. No weapon can harm me. I won't fear. I won't fear. People of God say hallelujah. He always guides me. He always guides me. Through mountains and valleys. Through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing. His joy is refreshing. Restores my soul. Restores my soul.
the mirror daily and ask ourselves questions. Am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Did I work hard enough? Will I realize my dreams? We know we're not alone in our quest for answers. It's time to come together and remember who we are. Rare. Valuable. Beautiful. Capable. Powerful. Strong. A game changer. More than enough. No more settling for second best. It's time you receive clarity about who you are. Join us for Worth 2020, a radical women's conference in College Park, Georgia, March 19th through the 21st. An experience created for women like you and me. We see you, we are you, and we know after this conference, your life will never be the same. So join us. Register now at taffydollar.org. have to begin to see God as big as He is and see ourselves in the midst of God's big plan. Y'all don't understand me. God will put a show on you've never seen. He'll do something that everybody said was impossible. Hi, world changers. It's really a pleasure for me to send you all my warmest greetings to two of the finest people I've ever known, Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar. Congratulations on World Changers' 34th church anniversary. It seems like only yesterday when you started in that little school, doesn't it? What an accomplishment. All for the glory of God. You both have been truly trailblazers and pioneers for the body of Christ, spearheading epic movements of God's grace and faith and biblical equality that have impacted the world, impacted my life as well. You really have left a mark that will never be erased. Well done. God is so happy with you guys, and he's not done with you, that's for sure. The best is yet to come. There's so much more for you guys and so much more for World Changers. I'm honored to be your brother and your friend. I love you guys so much. Congratulations, World Changers. No better place to be. God bless. 34 years. World Changers Church has been changing the world. <laughs> I want to tell you right now, all of you, you, you well, hey, all, all of you know how I feel about you. But when, I, when I preach at World Changers, it's like going home to preach. And I, I, Gloria and I love you. This ministry loves you. Your place on, on the network is so wonderful. And your voice, that's what's important. The voice of world changers, the voice of Creflo Dollar Ministries, the voice that's reaching this planet is powerful, and I'm a part of it, and I love you with all of my heart. In the name of Jesus, remember this, Jesus is Lord. Hello, Creflo and Taffy. This is Andrew, and I just wanted to say congratulations on your anniversary, 34 years. That's quite an accomplishment. And I just want to say that you have been such a blessing to me. Man, you've made a big impact on my life, and not only on me, but you have shared my teaching and me with other people, and, and there's people that like me now that didn't like me before just because of you. You've been a super friend. You've been a great friend in the ministry. I appreciate everything that you've done. And I praise God for your 34 years in the ministry and pray you got another 34 coming at least. It's a blessing. God bless you. Thank you for everything you do. And God bless you on this anniversary. Well, praise the Lord. Bill Winston here. Listen, on behalf of my wife, Veronica, and all the saints of God at Living Word Christian Center and Bill Winston Ministries, Dr. Creflo A. Dollar and Taffy Dollar, congratulations. Lord, we are celebrating you. 
Your, your achievements are magnanimous. Is that a word? Praise God. I'm talking about can't be measured. I'm saying, and I believe this is only beginning. At your 34th anniversary, church anniversary. I mean, it doesn't even seem like it's been that long. I know, <laughs> but it has been, praise God. But you are making a mark that cannot be erased. I am thanking God for you. And I believe this is only just the beginning. Thank you both for your contribution to the gospel. We love you. Bill Winston saying, keep walking. Bye for you. and welcome to World Changer's 34th anniversary service. Can y'all believe how far the church has come? We were from doing Bible studies at West Georgia College in 1981 to five years after that, holding our first service in the chapel. Isn't God good? Yes, Pastor, God is great. Praise Him. And God didn't stop there. You see, He had big plans for World Changer. Can you believe that we started this ministry 14 years ago and we moved into this $17 million dome debt free? Now, if that don't want to make you shout, then I don't know what it is. Over the years, Royal Changers has created several outreach programs in our community and around the world. We've launched Royal Changers Christian Academy and several mentorship programs for boys and girls. God has truly blessed our ministry through faith and prayer. And the best thing is that God has blessed us with this beautiful dome, churches all over the world, and successful endeavors. <laughs> However, World Changes is a church that loves and accepts people for who they are. World Changes is not a church that will teach you religion, but is a church that will teach you how to have a relationship with Christ. Glory to God. Say it, Pastor. And as we always say around here, in all your day, get understanding. Lord, thank you for 34 years of ministry, and we can't wait to see what you have in store for us for the next 34 years. All that agree, shout amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. <laughs> amen. Good morning. <laughs> Yeah, she got taffy, boy. <laughs> Amen. Oh, lift your hands up and just praise God for a moment. Father, we just give you praise, Lord. We come before you and we acknowledge again and again and again and again our need for you, that we don't ever want to stand before you thinking that we can be like you without you. And so, Father, help us today. Help us to live a life that will be pleasing in your sight. Open our ears up. Fulfill the purpose of, of our presence here today as we came to meet you, God, that every circumstance and situation in our lives, all is well with you. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and receive our communion this morning. If you need communion elements, if you'll lift your hands up, the ushers will get them to you. And I cannot overemphasize how important it is for you to recognize that during this communion, it constantly should bring to your mind what Jesus has done. Constantly bring into your attention that because of the shed blood of Jesus, we have a blood bought right to come boldly before the throne of God. And because of the blood of Jesus, we have a blood-bought right to have a personal relationship with God. And because of Jesus, we have a blood-bought right to be righteous. I had the Lord say that to me this morning when I woke up this morning. He said, don't ever get hooked on to your past so long that you forget who you are today. Do you hear what I said? You know, sometimes you can you start flirting around where, where you came from and start feeling bad about it and sorrowful about it and repentance. No, 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 no. No, you have to open your mouth up during those times and say, I am the righteousness of God now. 
Everybody say that. I am the righteousness of God now. Amen. People sometimes try to get you and, you know, keep dogging your past out, but your, your future is always going to be greater than your past. And I tell you where you are right now is going to be greater than your past. So let's take this bread, which represents the broken body of Jesus Christ, and through this broken body, he has made us whole. So I pronounce wholeness over every area of your life that appears to be broken, your emotions, your physical body, that Jesus, through his broken body, has made us whole. And for as often as we eat of this bread, which represents his body, we do so in remembrance of him. You may eat. Now take the cup, which represents the blood of Jesus. Thank God for his blood. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How do we overcome Satan? We're overcoming by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. We're living in a very interesting time right now. And ladies and gentlemen, I say plead the blood. Plead the blood. Every time a situation looks crazy, plead the blood. Every time you just can't figure out what you're going to do, plead the blood. And so right now, I plead the blood of Jesus over your life, over your family, over your finances, over anything that's wrong and everything that's right. I plead the blood of Jesus. For as often as you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of him. You may drink. I need you to turn to three people and tell them all is well with me and my house. All is well. All is well with me and my house. <clears throat> Praise God. Well, praise the Lord. We've had almost like two weeks of celebration. It's like, let's get back to work now. Amen. <laughs> it's been an amazing two weeks. Father, I thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm going to be picking up with uh, uh, the final installment. We've been talking to you about clarity versus spiritual blindness or spiritual blindness versus clarity. And I, frankly, I thought I was through with it. I, there were four scriptures left, and I'm like thinking, well, there's just four scriptures. I'll pick it up the next time. And I could not shake this. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I need to look at it again. And man, when I did, a tsunami just hit me. Uh, things that we need to understand that God is committed in this area of guidance. He is committed in this area of guiding you to the will of God for your life. Everybody in here has a purpose. Everybody in here, God has a plan for your life. And uh, from what I could see through these scriptures that I'm going to share this morning, He's not just depending on you to get there. He has made a commitment to do whatever needs to be done and to allow whatever needs to be done in your life to help you to arrive at that place where you're supposed to be. I'm now understanding how important it is now when Paul talked about contentment, that there are lots of courses that a person may have to take in order to arrive successfully and when I say arrive successfully, I mean to be able to arrive at that destination and be prepared to be successful in that destination. There's a purpose and there's a plan for everybody in this room. There, there has been a distribution of gifts and anointings that have been put on every person in this room. You've been wired a particular way so you can carry out the, the purpose that God has for your life. And there's no wasted life in this place. There's no person in this place this morning where you can say, well, you know, I don't have a purpose. And you may look frustrated. You may not know the plan of God for your life. There is a plan for your life. And God is committed to helping you to arrive at that place for your life. 
And I, I want you to see this, how, you know, you really, you, you, we got to be careful not to buy into what the unsaved world puts out there for your thinking. You've got to stick with the Word of God, and you've got to make it a discipline. I believe desire gives birth to discipline. I think we've said discipline gives, we've tried to discipline ourselves to get the desire. I believe it's the other way around. I believe when you desire things, because of your desire, you end up doing things. How many of you like to eat? You figure out how to do that every day, don't you? You're disciplined in doing that. And so when you have a desire for God and a relationship that you're pursuing where God is concerned, you'll find disciplines being born out of the desire that you have. Now, as we look at this today, this is God's promise and God's willingness and commitment to guide you to the path that you were born to go down. Guidance to the place and the destiny of your life. And believe me, I know well that sometimes you end up in places and you, you think, where is God? What did I do? Are you mad at me? Did I do something wrong? All involved in his plan to get you and to prepare you so you'll be ready when you arrive at that destination in your life. And the church said, amen. amen. So let's begin this morning in Psalms 119, 130. I want to use this as a text this morning because I, I truly believe that if we're going to start down that path, we're going to have to start with this, and we have to really lay hold of this. There's something about the Christian getting in God's Word and coming to a place where you desire God's Word. And you kind of get to the place where you stop trying to have church and church becomes the place where you express your relationship and your love for God. In Psalms 119, verse 30, let's read it out loud together. He says, the entrance of thy words give light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. I believe that true clarity starts with the entrance of God's word. I believe if we're going to see clearly, I believe as we, if we're going to see the right dispensations and see through the lens of grace, all of that starts with allowing the Word to be a part of your life. So the question you've got to ask yourself, and, and here's how I study Scripture. I read it, and then I immediately ask myself, now, where do I fit in this? Am I doing this? Am I not doing this? Have I neglected this? That, I'm not just reading the Word like you would read a novel. I'm reading this Word because it, it becomes the checklist for my life. And when I read something, I don't want to just read over it and say, well, that's for somebody else. I want to read it, and I want to ask myself, is this true in my life? You know, a while back I asked myself, am I satisfied with the amount of time that I'm spending in the Word? It changed my life because the answer was no. And I think a lot of times people are trying to pursue certain things from God, and they're even trying to pursue God, but you're doing that without allowing the Word to enter. The entrance of that Word will bring light. And I believe it starts there with every person. Having a desire to want to get God's Word, not just at church. Of course, this plays a big part, but also in your personal time. Even take what you get at church and spend the rest of the week breaking it down. Spending the rest of the week looking at each scripture and asking yourself, how do I fit here? And how does this scripture fit with me? So that we're no longer praying, playing church, but we know how to live this genuine life with the scripture. The genuine life with the word of God that we read and what we're meditating on, that it convicts us, that it convinces us, that it changes us, that it challenges us until we get to a place where we're saying, oh, now I'm enlightened. Oh, now I have clarity. Oh, now I have understanding of this application in my life. You know, it really blows my mind to see any Christian sit back and be critical of another Christian because you become a part of the team accuser of the brethren. I don't even see how you have room for that. You got so many issues and you can do a podcast criticizing some other guy. You're saying you're perfect while you're criticizing some imperfection, imperfection you found in somebody else's life. And before you do that, back up. Dude, you got plenty of issues in your life. How you doing a podcast on some other preacher or something like that? At least he's doing something. At least he's in the game. 
At least he's in the game trying to do something. So why would you want to become a part of team accuser of the brethren and just make it harder for him? But you know what? Some of y'all need this. Some of y'all, in order to be prepared for your destination, you need a good butt cook, kick, kicking, butt cooking, a, a butt kicking from somebody that just, just make you go there. Because he knows when you get to your destination, you're going to be surrounded by those kind of people. So you got to take that butt-kicking course before you arrive at that destination to make sure you're, you got the necessary fruit and the necessary equipping to handle the situation. So you got to understand, you guys were born at this time because God knew you were supposed to be here now. You're a special type of person for a special type of generation, and you're going to be able to handle it, praise God. People that were born 100 years ago, they couldn't handle what's going on right now. But God has equipped you to be able to handle it, to deal with it, to minister to it, and to make a change. You're supposed to be here right now, today, at this particular time. You can handle it. You can handle it. So what is his commitment to us? Let's begin and just allow these scriptures to speak to our hearts this morning. Psalms 37 and verse 23 through 25. Uh, what's God's part? Uh, what is his commitment in our guidance? How many of you want to know the plan of God for your life? Amen. Amen. I want to know the plan of God for my life. The greatest, greatest day of my life is when I discovered the plan of God for my life. Wow. But there were a lot of things I went to. I didn't necessarily want to go down that path. And there were some things that I had to really get into and, and, and understand. Look at this. Psalms 37, verse 23 through 25. He says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way, though he fall. So there's going to be some falling going towards that path. Are you understand? Though he fall. You know, your greatest lessons come from sometimes from your biggest mistakes, your biggest, biggest mess up become greatest, your greatest messages and sermons and, and life lessons come from looking at you. And somebody want to call you an expert. Yeah, you're an expert in, in falling. <laughs> You know, the first time I went skiing, I, I struggled. I, I struggled with this. Well, I struggled with a lot of things. First of all, I'm the only black guy on a ski slope. So I'm figuring I ain't got no business here in the first place. Secondly, the little, the little thing that picks you up and takes you somewhere, I, I, I thought they were going to stop and let me get on. So when I got on, I'm hanging halfway off the thing, and I'm like, you can kill somebody going up this high and all that. But they taught me how to fall because they, tell, they told me, now, if you run into somebody, you could be sued. I said, well, I, I learned how to fall. You know, I became an expert in falling. <laughs> I learned something. I learned how to go on that ski slope anymore. But sometimes you've got to recognize some of the stuff you go through. That may be the thing you need to know to help you get where you need to be. I never thought, I would have never believed that the Holy Ghost would be the one behind leading Jesus into the wilderness. But the Bible says Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil by the Holy Spirit. He led him into the wilderness. I wonder where he's going to lead you. See, we got this little daisy mentality, this on the clouds, uh, sipping a Coca-Cola mentality. Where's he going to lead you? God's going to lead you to the places that are going to prepare you for the destination. Amen? He says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Look at the next verse. I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Now look at this in the Amplified Bible. Uh, Psalms 37, verse 23, in the, in the Amplified version here. He says, the steps of a good man are directed and established by the Lord when he delights in his way and, and he busies himself with every step. 24, though he falls, he shall not be utterly 
cast down. For the Lord grasped his hand in support and upholds him. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's got your hand. So no matter what happens, God's got your hand. God's got your hand. Well, that's comforting to me. God's got my hand. God's got my hand. He's got me. He's got my hand. Boy, that's so comforting to me. God's got my hand. So the next time you fall, remember, God's got my hand. And sometimes you feel like I done fell so deep, ain't no recovery. God's got my hand. And look at this. I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the uncompromisingly righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. I've, one scripture says, I've never seen the uncompromisingly righteous uh, hungry and forsaken. That God will never, ever abandon you because of your righteousness. Say out loud, I'm the righteousness of God. So no matter what happens on your journey to discovering the plan of God for your life, God's got your hand. So you don't have to be afraid. That no matter what happens, God's got my hand. He's not going to let me go. He's not going to forsake me. He's not going to leave me. Now, for, the, for, for a moment, it might seem like, uh-oh. But just remember, God's got me. God's got me. There have been several situations in my life where I simply heard those words in my spirit, I got you. I got you. I know it seems like something really, really bad's going to happen, but I got you. There's nothing that I allow you to go in without my hand gripped to yours. Hallelujah. Some of you don't even know how you got in the situation you're in right now, but God's got your hand. You remember that old song, put your hands in the hands of the man who steals the water? That's all I remember, but God's got your hand. Amen? Now, look at Jeremiah chapter 10. <coughs> Jeremiah 10, verse 23. God's got your hand, and he orders your steps. God's got your hands, and he orders your steps. God's got your hands, and he orders your steps. Now, now, some Christians say, well, that can't be God having me step here. Remember, the Holy Spirit led Jesus in the wilderness. Well, that can't be God to have me here. Here, Remember, the Holy Ghost led Jesus in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, why would God let this happen? Honey, he trying. He knows you got to take certain courses before you arrive. Some of y'all think you get saved and bam, you just show up. Well, you're just going to mess up a lot of lives because you don't know enough. I mean, one of the greatest deceptions is that we think we know more than we really know. And that's why I want to always be a student. I don't want to ever get to the place where I think I, I know something and have to realize, well, I, I guess I didn't know what, what I thought I knew. Thank God. Lord, teach me how to be content where I am, trusting you and believing that you have my hands. So if I'm in an uncomfortable situation, remember what Paul says. Paul said, I learned how to be content in no matter what situation I was in. Lord, help me to continue to learn how to be content regardless of whatever the situation I'm in. When I'm up, I want to be content. When I'm down, I want to be content. When all my bills are paid, I want to be content. When they're not paid, I want to be content. When the IRS sent you a letter, I want to be content. Help me to know how to be just fine trusting you in no matter what situation it is. Why? Because I know wherever I am today, that's not where I'm always going to be. I am on my way somewhere. I'm on my way somewhere. I'm on my way somewhere. And I guarantee you, wherever you are right now is, is just part of the equipping. So you can be ready when you arrive. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Now, you ask the question, why are my steps ordered by the Lord? Look at this in the NLT, the New Living Translation. Now, this was pretty fascinating to me. 
that uh, the, the way of, of man is not in himself. It's, it's uh, put this up. Everybody look at this. Look at this. I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. Now stop right there. Can you recall sometime in your life, or maybe you've said it yourself, this is my life, and I can live it the way I want to live it. All right, let me, let, me, let me help you. It's not your life. And that's the problem. First of all, you think it's your life, and then you proceed to try to live it the way you want to live it, and you, you wonder why things ain't working. I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. Now think with me for a moment. To now realize that your life is not your own and that you need him to help you to plan your own course. Think about the guy who says, this is my life and I do, I, I'm going to live the way I want to live. Let me, let me show you the problem with that. Here, here, is where the, here is where the problem comes in is you're trying to live your life the way you want to live it and you don't know how it's supposed to work. <laughs> you don't know how it's supposed to work. And that's the sad thing about it. And, and, and believe me, we're living in a generation right now where it's just filled with people. This is my life. I want to live like I want to live, how I want to live. I want to be what I want to be. I did it my way. <laughs> and it's going to be like gravity. You can never win over gravity. You can, you can go on top of whatever building, but when you step off, gravity will always win. And see, you've been conditioned to just, you know, live by the moment, and, and social media will deceive you. Social media gives you a picture of everybody's happiness. But as soon as they posted it, the thing, the, the thing got posted, it, it, they went back to the same depression argument. People who were ready to kill themselves will post something with a smile. And now you compare yourself with with that, you're following somebody who's trying to plan his own life. And look at where it ends up. Now, here's what God wants. Can you get to the point where you say, Lord, this is not my life. You gave it to me. You've got a purpose and a plan for it. Help me to plan the course. Help me to plan the course. How are you not wanting to have something to do with the only one who really understands the plan and the course for your life. And you're so busy trying to get on somebody else's path while you keep going by past your path. Let me, let me talk to you for a moment here. What happens is we, in, in search of the plan and the will of God for our lives or trying to find purpose in our lives, when you X God out of that process, you leave it up to you to choose the path, and most of the time, you're right there at the will of God for your life, and you choose the other path. Now, here's what happens. The other path takes you on a detour that may take two years of your life. And then you get back to that path again, and watch this. You say, something telling me to go to it. No, and then you choose your own path, and you're going on a four-year detour. Now, you've lost six years in detour and detour, and you keep coming back close to the path because God loves you. You keep coming there, but you don't want to have nothing to do with him. You don't want to have nothing to do with anything that contradicts your plans, your plans. So if God, if God called you and equipped you and gifted you to do something, he's going to be the one to lead you to the path of you being able to use that gift and plan. But no. You've been busy comparing yourself amongst yourself, and you're so busy trying to be like somebody else, all you've been doing is pursuing a cheap copy. And God's trying to get you to go down that original path for you so you can be an, a, a very valuable original. But you won't do that. You're so busy trying to be like somebody else. What tickles me is sometimes when I talk to, to, to our, our younger kids, they are, they're, they're actually deceived at the style they have that they originated it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, little boy, you ain't originating nothing. You're just copying somebody else. 
you too, you too, you too afraid to originate something because God wants you to be that original. There's, a, there's an original part of you that can change somebody's life. I was talking to a friend of mine, and I, and I challenged him. I said, until you are ready to put down and to walk away from the old script of the Civil Rights Movement and open yourself up to the new script of what God wants to do right now, you're just going to continue to be a cheap copy of everybody who done died. And we'll keep talking about that same old script back then. Every generation is responsible for its generation, and you can't be afraid to step away to see what the script is for this generation. Well, why should I care? Because God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. That's going to be a world-changing plan. That's going to impact your life like, like your life and somebody else's life. Well, why don't he just go and give it to me? Because you ain't ready yet. And if you enter into the destination unprepared, you're going to mess up somebody else's life because there are other people involved in that destination. There are other people that are scheduled to meet you at that place. So what happens? Old script just continues to maintain old problems. Yeah. When is somebody going to get bold enough to step out and say, you know what? What are you saying, God? What do you want me to do? Imagine if we were still under the old script and the old dispensation of the law. Oh, I don't have to imagine. We were there. And it wasn't nice, was it? And so now, me and some other people begin to talk about this new script of the gospel of grace and all hell breaks loose and people think that you're this and that. And you got to be prepared for that. When God prepares you to deliver a message, you got to be prepared for it. I'm, I'm prepared for people talking about me, dogging me out, making fun of me. I, I spent almost 20 years preparing for that. So now, when I teach the gospel of grace, and somebody wants to make a, 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 a derogatory, negative comment about it, don't bother me. I'm thinking, it's out there, you got to decide whether you want it or not. I'm going to go get an ice cream cone. What's up? <laughs> that ain't going to keep me up at night. That ain't going to cause me to do this. That's, you know, then that's not going to cause me to, to, to come and defend myself. You know, I, I get tickled at some of these people. You know, certain things, when people talk about you, certain things don't require a response. Cert, certain, there are times when you just need to shut up. Come on now. You already know it ain't true. It doesn't require a response. I'm going to call her back and let get her told you don't talk about me. Just, you, you, you know, I, I told you that word of the Lord that came to my wife, tend to your own business. Some of y'all are in everybody's business and stressed out and don't know why. Because you're taking on somebody else's stress. Let me go leave that alone, y'all. Some of y'all, I don't want to hear that. I didn't come here to hear all of that, you know. I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. Now, look, now apply that to you. Do I know that my life is not mine? I'm not able to plan my own course. You know how powerful it is when you come to a place where you can admit, I am not able to plan my own course. The issue is you think you are. You think you are. I don't need God. I don't need no church. I don't need no pastor taking money from me. That's your excuse now. God, I'm not able to plan my own course. You know what happens the day you realize that? You get out of his way and allow him to take you because he already got your hands and say, come on, baby, let me go in front, follow me. That's what it means to yield. Let me go in front, follow me as I escort you. See, I want to be escorted to my, the path that God wants in my life. So when I get there, somebody said, what are you doing? This is where God 
has called me and escorted me to do. And everything you're looking for in life, everything you lack in life, is waiting at that place called there. It's waiting at that destination for your life. And God will take you to that place where wholeness will be your testimony because I found where I was supposed to be, but I cannot, I'm not able to plan my own course. That's the most powerful thing I've ever read. I'm not able to plan my own course. But when he is allowed to do that, oh, when you get to that destination, you'll sit back and say, I don't know the intricate details of how I arrived here. And you'll lift your hands up and say, how great thou art. Amen. And you'll find in a lot of cases, I would have never known how to get here. Come on. But he does. Oh, lift your hands up. Just worship God for a moment. Just worship him for a moment. Oh, help me, Lord. Help me to plan my course. Help me to plan my course. Amen? Help me to plan my course. Amen. Uh, now, let's look, at, uh, let's look at Philippians chapter 2 and 3 in the NLT. Uh, is God really committed to be involved and working in us, uh, you know, I thought as a Christian, you know, because people told me that the Bible said that God helps those who help themselves. And I was looking for that scripture. <laughs> and I found out it is nowhere in the Bible. But then when Siri came along, I found out, wait a minute. The Bible didn't say nothing about God helping those who help themselves. The Bible said, well, the Bible makes it clear throughout the scripture, he helps those who need help. Benjamin Franklin said, God helps those who need, who need help. And we find we got to be careful not to take another man's comment that doesn't know God and turn it into Scripture. If you're going to live by the Word, make sure it's in the Word. Amen? All that's saying is, I don't trust that God can do anything without me. I should think that, well, Lord, I got to... I got to yield. Now, of course, there are lots of things if you want to do it right that requires you yielding to the Lord, but I also discovered that God knows how to get your attention. And God knows how to get you where you need to be when you need to be there. Don't think you all that now. He know how to do it. God know how to change your mind, and he know how to change your desires. Amen. Amen. Now, watch this. Uh, Philippians 2, 3. Um, <clears throat> he says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble thinking of yourself. Uh, no, I don't want three. I want 213. I apologize because I'm looking at this like, that ain't what I studied yesterday. That's the one. For God is working in you. For God is working in you. For God is working in you. I say it, God is working in you. Right this moment while you are seated here listening to me preach, God is working in you. On the way home, God is working in you. When you get home, God is working in you. If you go to a bar tonight and get drunk, God is working in you. If you got a date with a prostitute tonight uh, off uh, uh, Sullivan Road, uh, I don't know if that still exists, but God is working in you. If you're upset with somebody and got unforgiveness, God is working in you. I don't care the situation. God is at work in you right now. God is working in you. Now, what is he doing? He's giving you the desire. The desire. See, you might not want to do the thing that God has revealed to you, but God says, I'm gonna, I, you, not only will you end up doing it, but I'm going to give you the desire. You're going to want to do it before it's over with. Ain't no way in the world I want to be no preacher. Ain't no way in the world I want to be no preacher. My last name was Dolly. It didn't go together. Reverend Dolly. I ain't no way in the world I want to be no preacher. I didn't have no desire. I ain't like preachers. I ain't had no desire. But God started working in me. Some of the things that you're gifted to do and the plan of God for your life, you might not want to do it right now. But God is working on the inside of you, praise God. God is working in you. He's working in you to do what? Giving you the desire and 
the ability. That word power is the ability to get the job done. He's giving you the desire and the ability to do what pleases him. So this is more than you. Of course, your decision is important, absolutely. You know, of course, when God begins to show you things, you making a decision to cooperate with him, that's a very, very important part of it. But God says, I will also do my part and work in you to give you the desire to do what pleases me. How many want to please God? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Someone says, why do you want to please God? Because I'm going to die one day. And when I die one day, I'm going to stand face to face to something that's more real than this physical world being in this physical body. And I don't think a lot of people understand that you have to be prepared to die. They don't think about that. You don't think about that. And, and, and not to be prepared to die. You, you think you're so in control of your life and so in control of your course, and then that moment comes, that, that issue comes, that thing happens, you got up that morning, never knew that was your last day, and now you're dead. You don't have time to get prepared. You don't have time to go do it again. It's, it's done. You're dead. You have slipped out of time into eternity. I can't risk that. I have to be ready every day. And that's not talking about having good behavior every day. There's, there's one easy way to get ready. Get born again and you're ready. Because what Jesus has, you know, we're, I'm not talking about the outside job. I'm not talking about, you know, you can't wear pants no more, you can't wear makeup or you ain't going to go to heaven, all that bunch of bad stuff. What Jesus did was an inside job. It's an inside job that occurred when you got born again. And the day you make Jesus the Lord of your life is the day where you declare to heaven and hell, I am ready to die at any moment. Why? Because I have Jesus in my life. Not because I did all the goody-goody things, but I had Jesus in my life. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus that he forgave me of all of my sins, known and unknown. He, I, I believe in Jesus that he shed his blood for me. I believe in Jesus and the finished works of Jesus. I am ready to die. There's some people that are not. They're still planning their course because they say, this is my life, and I want to live it the way I want to live it. And if you don't like it, then tough. Well, you know, as long as you, you know, not living in my house, then yeah, you can do whatever you want to do. But I see that all the time, and my heart goes out because it's like, have you ever met an arrogant person? <laughs> you, know what, you know what arrogant is? Arrogance really is? It's dressed up insecurity. If you will know how to understand stuff, you can look at people and, oh, I see your problem right now. You're arrogant, but you're really insecure. You ever met a real angry person? That's a person that's full of fear. That's, that's what, that's what it, anger is, is nothing but an expression of fear. So the next time you're around some person that's angry, you ask them, what are you afraid of? Because when you're expressing anger, you're expressing, I am afraid of something. So you need God to help plan your course. Because you're going in all the wrong ways. You're in search of fame. You're in search of a great image. You know, the Academy Awards are coming in tonight. I am still blown away how this country worships movie stars. I'm blown away. The worship of God has been replaced by actors and professional sports. And you don't think you need God to help you to plan your life? You're going to die one day. That's the thing I'm trying to get. All actors are going to die. All athletes are going to die one day. All famous people are going to die one day. 
They might have been famous here. They're not going to be famous when they get there. There's only one famous person up there. And he's not to be competed with. See, so you're, not looking, you're not looking far enough down the road. You're stuck in this one realm. And you don't understand. You're going to die. That's why it, it hurts me so much when I see somebody that's 18 dead. Now he has to look at stuff he honestly just never knew. That's why we can't waste time playing church. That's why I can't get up here, get the organ up there, and let's have some church and get you to shout a little bit. God is a good God. Come on, let's pray. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Because you got to learn and understand some things, and you got to get clarity of some things, and you got to be able to see some things. So you'll begin to make decisions. Wait a minute, God, I get this thing. This is not me growing so big spiritually that I don't need you. This is me every time I fail and miss it, acknowledging there goes again proof that I need you, God. Every time you lose your temper, proof that I need you, God. Every time you miss the mark, proof that I need you, God. Every time you think the wrong thing, proof that I need you, God. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'm hungry for all this stuff to end. Let's just, let's just end it. Let's end it. Close the book on this thing, God. Take us up and show these people who think they know so much what this whole thing's about. God said, you don't mean that. I'm like, oh, yes, I do. I look up quite often and say, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And I'm around my girl. He, my girls, they say, no, nah, don't pray that. Play, play. I ain't done this yet. I said, well, you better hurry up. <laughs> the other morning in morning Bible study, we taught on heaven. And we're talking about the realities of heaven, and we were blown away all of the clues that God gave us in the Bible about heaven. And yet there, there are people that don't even think about it. So my question to you this morning, and I didn't mean to go this way, but my question to you this morning is, are you prepared to die? Have you made Holy Ghost reservations and do you have the confirmation? So when you get there and they closing the gate, wait a minute, I'm, I'm here. Do you have reservation? Yes. What's the confirmation? Jesus, come on in. Wow. So he's working in you right now. He's working in you right now. Oh, glory to God. He's working in you right now. I used to think it was just an amazing thing that when a preacher would come out and preach and people are standing up and making noise and screaming and dancing and hollering and, oh, man, that's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. Until I start hanging out with some of those people after church <laughs> and I realized there was very little impact to a highly emotional response to something they didn't even understand. I said, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be the guy that entertains you. And then when I get to heaven, I didn't teach you nothing. And then when I see some people on the way to hell, they're shooting me a bird because they're like, <laughs> why you didn't tell us? Well, because y'all wanted to dance. You know we didn't know no better. You the pastor, you should have told us. Well, I'm telling you. And if you come before the judgment seat of God, and tell me what you didn't know, I'm going to be right behind that, that seat. Tell me I use a lie. <laughs> hey, go to CD, Jesus. Check it out. <laughs> I told them 4,000 times, Lord. They won that church, but one of them. <laughs> so your steps have been ordered. So with clarity, you can walk in those steps. So he's working on the inside of you.
He has your hands. He has your life. He's agreed to help plan the course of your life. He is committed to you finding that will of God for your life. Well, look at Jeremiah chapter 29 and 11. I want to look at it in the, in the NLT. God has an expected end for all of us. I, I hope your end is at the place where God expects for you to be, to be. I often wonder about that. Lord, I want to make sure I'm on course. I want to make sure I end up where, you're, where, you, where your plans are for me to end up. I, I don't want to end up somewhere where, oh. So here's the deal. Uh, we live in a society right now, and this is, this is so deceiving. We live in a society right now that if you make a mistake, the society wants to keep reminding you of the, that one mistake that you made, like they ain't got nothing to. <laughs> that they can't hardly report on you without going back and picking up, yeah, you were awesome, but now what about that one? Well, what about yours? And your mama's, and your grandmama now. <laughs> People grow from that place. You just don't understand, people, even some of the people that you still judge wrongly and you haven't seen them in a while, they're not where they were when you last saw them. Uh -huh. Everybody say progress. progress. They're not where, where you last saw them. But yet your opinion and judgment of them is where you last saw them. Yeah, but you're going to understand, you know, they went to church, they smoked, they got two divorces. Okay, they were crazy. Everybody got a crazy spot. <laughs> What's your crazy spot? <laughs> I don't understand that. Christianity it does not mean you came out flawless, and it just irks me when you, we pick people and think, oh, they were so wonderful, they were so awesome, they gave bicycles to three people, and oh, just darling folks. Are them same folks got some crazy spots too? Amen. Do you actually think the things we see in our society today are new? They had, they had people doing crazy stuff in, in 640. AD, they were crazy. It was just, it was, you could hide it better because you didn't have iPhones and <laughs> microphones and cameras and traffic phones. I don't, I, there's nothing new under the sun. Right. We think, well, sin's progress. No, it was just as nasty <laughs> back in Jesus' day as it is today. There were, there were cross dressers in back in Jesus' day. You know that, don't you? Come on now. <laughs> there wasn't no pictures. He didn't want no pictures. <laughs> what would happen in the body of Christ if we can just stop? accusing and judging people from their crazy spots and realize they've grown from there. They've grown from there. Some of y'all, y'all remember some of y'all how y'all were when you were a teenager? My Lord. My Lord. I was crazy. I was absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, demon-possessed crazy. I was risky. I wanted to see if I can get away with everything. I was on my way home one night trying to sneak home. My daddy pulled me over. He was a policeman. My daddy pulled, my own daddy pulled me over. He pulled me over, got out of the car. He said, license and registration. I said, daddy, quit playing. He said, don't say nothing unless I tell you. I'm like, well, God, no. Is we actually going to do this? Man gave me a ticket. 
And then when I got home, took my license, my, my keys, so I couldn't drive nowhere. God, no. I'm sneaking off in a hotel somewhere, you know, prom night, you know, you know. And I see this big old light shining in the window. It was my daddy. So my deal was, when I go to college, I'm going so far away. <laughs> Where there are mountains, because he didn't like to fly. I'm going where there are mountains and nothing. You won't even, I want to don't turn around, you ain't going to be able to see me. <laughs> and uh, we had this football game, and, and I called him. I said, well, I'm out for the game. I'm injured, so ain't no use you come up here. He said he was going to come up there. And I'm like, well, he ain't coming. And I'm walking back to the locker room. And I'm not here. Chico! <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> It was my daddy, but I was so glad to see him that we wasn't a hooking type of family. You understand? It was, we were kind of a grunting family. <laughs> hey, how you? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I hooked him that day. I'm so glad to see him. I ain't knowing the world to do. I don't know how we got in there. <laughs> crazy spot. Everybody got a crazy spot. <laughs> Growing from that place is where we honor God, not try to keep people at the same place you encountered them. They have grown from that place. Amen. 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 <sighs> Verse 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disaster. So if you're having disaster, that's not God's plan. The crazy stuff going on in your life, it's not his plan. His plan is for good, not for disaster. His plan is to give you a future. His plan is to give you hope. Now, you take that scripture and you apply it to your life. If his plans are not plans for disaster, then I must be going down the wrong path. If his plans are not plans for hopelessness, then I must be going down the wrong path. If his plan is not a plan that says you don't have a future, you might as well give up now and kill yourself. That must not be his plan for your life. His plans for your life are good. I said they're good. Amen. I said they're good. Amen. Amen? They're good. I guess I'm losing some people here because I'm not hollering and screaming, but I don't know. Whatever. I'm a, I, I am going to stick with what God told me to do. Amen. You need to be taught. You need to get clarity and understanding, so I'm going to talk to you. There are many churches in Atlanta that can scream and hop and holler at you, and you're welcome to go to those. But as long as I'm black and living, I am going to teach you something, so when you walk out of here, you will have some understanding on how life is supposed to work. Don't bother me. Y'all been walking for 40 years almost. I'm good. It's going to be hard to walk out of here and not think about what I said. It's going to be hard to walk out of here without thinking about, are you prepared to die? Remember them old folks used to talk about you? You, you're trying, you can't run away from God. I don't remember what they say. You, <laughs> you can't run. All right, now watch this. Look at Proverbs 16 and 9 in the NLT. Proverbs 16 and 9. What are we doing? We're turning the scriptures, apply, explaining them, and then you're asking yourself, is that working in my life? What am I doing? You know, a plumber's got to go get training in order to be a plumber. Huh? A doctor's got to go get trained in order to be a doctor. But Christians want to be Christians without training. 
Marriages don't have hope because <coughs> we want to jump into a marriage and it doesn't even have a, sh a shot because there's no training in how to be a, ma a married person. <coughs> you think marriage is all about, well, <coughs> I love her, he love me. <coughs> oh, that's going to wear off in about two, three weeks. <laughs> you got to have something deeper than that. Or you end up, I love you, but, because you don't know how to live with each other. You don't know how to live married. You don't know when certain crazy stuff happens, that's just called marriage. You've been looking at too many movies. You're looking at movies about laying in the grass somewhere. <laughs> Little violin playing and all that kind of stuff. Now, they didn't, make, they didn't make a real movie about marriage. Oh, I love you. Oh, 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 you're, oh, you're awesome. You're special. And then, you know, go on commercial and come back. You know what? I can't stand your tail. <laughs> and I thought about not marrying you in the first place, but I tell you what, you better not tell me to shut up no more. That's what you better not do, or you're going to learn today. I'm going to tell you right there. What you going to do? Hit me? Hit me, Joker. I take judo. Hit me. I will hurt you, man. <laughs> Baby, bring me some water. What's wrong with your feet? <laughs> Wife laying on top of you. I, <clears throat> baby, what's wrong? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Oh, baby, you've been putting it on heaven lately. <laughs> and she don't speak to you for two weeks because you told her what she really was. You didn't have to say it like that. <laughs> that just sounds like marriage. Helping to mature you out of immaturity so you can learn how to be mature enough to get along with one another, trying to get you out of the self-centered circle and get you to put her in the circle or him in the circle and get you out of the circle so you can learn how to submit yourself one to another. But you got to take some courses. Christian people play these games. I'm tired of playing all these little church games. Come to church. You know, this is the way we come to church. Come to church. Come to church. This is the way we come to church early in the morning. This is the way we greet people. Hallelujah, greet people. Hallelujah, greet people. I'm so tired of that, I don't know what to do. Don't worry, I just got five more minutes to go. Some of like, is he ever going to finish? I got five minutes to go. I stick to the hour. <laughs> Proverbs 16 and 9. I'm not going to believe I just skipped across the front of the stage right there. I did skip. All right, watch this verse 9. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Wow. So those of you who decided, no, I'm going to go ahead and make my own plans. Yeah, you can make your plans, but at the end of it, God's going to determine your steps. Thank you, Jesus. Look at Isaiah 30, verse 21 in the NLT. What is this sermon? I, I'm just reading it. I'm reading it. I'm, I'm showing it to you, trying to get you to see it and apply it in your lives. I want you to live successful lives. I want you to be whole. I want you to be happy in your life. I want you to enjoy your life. This is the craziest year you're going to ever see, ever. And this is just February, and you ain't seen nothing yet. It's going to be two extremes, extremely bad and extremely good. And I want to focus on the extremely good part. And I might have to go through some bad parts to get to the good part, but I, I'm telling you, we're going to find out what kind of relationship you got with the Lord this year. Your own ears will hear him. Right behind you, a voice will say, this is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. Now, listen to what he was saying. Look at God's commitment. He says, I'm going to get you to the path. Your ears are going to hear me. You're going to hear a voice. 
And that voice is going to say, this is the way you should go. See, I, when I read this scripture, I'm like, am I open to hear from God? Do I need to do some more study and get in the Word on hearing from the Lord, the, the, the Holy Spirit leading my life, understanding that, that I'm His sheep and, and, and it, I, I hear His voice? I'm supposed to hear His voice because I'm His sheep. Why am I not hearing His voice? How do I hear His voice? Because He'll tell me, this is the way. This is the way you should go. I don't want to be so cluttered with the, the trauma of the world, so cluttered with the cares of the world, I can't hear that still small voice that says, this is the way. Go here. I have to have him. There's nothing about this life that says to me that I'm in control. What it says to me is that I need him. A couple more scriptures. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, the NLT. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Uh, well, the, the King James Version it says a little different. Acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he'll direct your path. When you're applying that scripture to your life, you ask yourself, am I acknowledging God in all my ways, or am I just acknowledging him in the ways I can't figure out how to deal with? Are you the kind of Christian that just only goes to God when it's an emergency, and then get upset when he doesn't respond quickly? The, the NLT says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Next verse. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Seek his will. God, uh, I'm getting ready to do this. What's your will for me and where this job's concerned? What's your will for me where this business is concerned? What's your will for me where this man or this woman is concerned, where marriage is concerned? What is your will for me, God? Will, will I take the time to let him in on it? If, if I believe he's my leader, if I believe he can plan my course, will I acknowledge him? And he says, by simply acknowledging him, by simply seeking his will for a thing. He'll show you which path to take. You know what the deal is? Either you don't know that or you know it and you're just not willing to do that. I remember a time in my life when I said, I don't want to know what his will is because I'm enjoying myself and I don't want to know his will because he might have me do some little nicey thing that I don't want to do. What's, that? What's going on in the world? You have people coming to church and the believers are not believing. But I bet you if you go outside and the sky breaks open and this dude appears in the sky, you ready to fall down there? Oh, Jesus, help me. I don't understand why wait till the last minute to do a thing. Why? Why? Why push it? Why push it? I can't afford not to get saved. Well, I don't really believe all that. Well, here's your issue. If you're right and there is no heaven or hell, then I still live a good life. But boy, if you're wrong, <laughs> you in trouble. I push it, man. It, it's, a, it's the promise of an amazing life. It's a promise of wholeness. It's a fulfillment of dreams. It's just God has a better way to get you there than you do. He loves you so much. He just wants to avoid the pain and the traps.
But I'm amazed at people. I learned this, man. It's like I can preach hard as I want to preach. I can show a thousand, fifty, hundred, eleven scriptures. <laughs> but I cannot be in control of that free will that God has given each of us. You got to make the decision. All I'm trying to do is lay out enough evidence for you to change your mind about trying to plan your own life without God. One more scripture. Isaiah 48, 17. God knows how to take the good and the bad and work it for your good. <laughs> he does. Last one. And I appreciate y'all. Y'all so amazing to sit here. You know how awesome it is to, to have a congregation that can sit here, listen to the word, and not 50% of them sleep by now. Now, now, some of you were struggling. I, I seen it. Some of y'all. <laughs> some of y'all just gave up. <laughs> Last scripture. <laughs> some of y'all like, dog, oh, man, I'm so upset football season over with. That means he ain't going to never shut up. No. <laughs> no. Last one. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is good for you. God will teach you what's good for you. I don't know, you know, you can kind of get excited about it, but it's like, man, what, what type of instructions is it going to require for me to finally realize that this is not good for me. But God will teach you what's good for you, and he leads you along the path you should follow. Over and over again, you can see his commitment to direct us and to guide us in that path for our life. And may you come to know and understand, may you come to see the path that God has planned for your life. For you, I declare, this is going to be the, one of the most amazing years you have ever had. I plead the blood of Jesus over you, over your family. There will be no tragedy in your life. All is well with you and your house. And may you go from one level of joy and happiness to another level of joy and happiness. May you come to know the joys of allowing him to lead and to guide your life. Lift your hands up just for a moment. Just worship him. Tell him whatever you want to tell him. Give him thanks for something. We're preparing to give, and as we prepare to give, I want you to start off by focusing your mind on what he's done. Focus in your heart on what he's done. In Jesus' name, amen. You get anything out of that this morning? Let's, uh, let's continue to worship God. If, let's, if you need an offering envelope, raise your hands. If you're giving by text, the information is on the screen. I, I don't want to be the guy that gets up every Sunday and try to come up with some little trigger to get you to give. I want you to understand that giving is a part of your worship. I want you to understand that you give out of gratitude out of thanksgiving and out of appreciation for what Jesus has already done. That you don't give to get blessed, you give because he's already blessed you. And giving becomes the opportunity where you begin to worship God with your money and you're bringing it as if they did in Matthew 2 and 11, where the Bible says they finally found Jesus and they fell to their knees worshiping him as they opened up the treasury. And all throughout the scripture, you see people bringing money, but you're trying to figure out what are they doing. And we've been taught, well, you got to give to get. No, we don't give to get. 
This is not a quid pro quo. We give because God has already been so amazing in our life. Giving is an honor act. We're honoring God. We're grateful. We're thankful to God. I mean, if it were not for him, we wouldn't have anything to give in the first place. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. But it's not to manipulate God. It's, Lord, this is my thanksgiving. Even a woman came in with a widow's mite. She said, this is all I have, but I bring something to you saying thank you for what you've done and what you're doing in my life. And you know, when you can just worship God with your finances, then all these other things will be added to you. But it's about taking some time out of your life and at least coming to church and saying, God, I thank you. God, I'm grateful. God, I appreciate you. So as you prepare your offerings, that's what we're going to do. Let your giving put you in remembrance of what God has already done in your life. And you're giving now, not asking God to do all these many things. You're taking this moment to say, for all you have done, I bring this gift that I am not giving to get. I am giving so that I can worship you. Giving is an act of worship. And this morning, if you cannot give to worship and thank God, please keep your money. Regardless of what you've heard about me, hear me well. I give out of gratitude for God. If you cannot give out of thanksgiving, keep that money. Keep it in your pocket and take it back home with you. Because this is our time to worship Jesus. This is our time to give thanks to him. And then all these other things will be added unto you. But that does not become my motivation. My motivation is him and all that he's done. Come on, let's worship him right now. Father, we thank you. We remember every time you delivered us. We remember every time you healed us. We remember every situation that you turned around. We remembered every favor, things we didn't deserve that you did it anyway. We remember the mercy of God. When we deserve bad, you didn't let it happen and you vindicated us. Oh God, we remembered your joy when we were worried and sad. We remember your peace that showed up in our lives. We remember all the good that you have done and bestowed upon us. And so we bring our gifts to worship you and to say thank you for what you've done. We sow them out of a cheerful heart of sincerity and gratitude. We honor you, Lord, with our gifts today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. Ushers, let's go ahead and receive those of you who are watching in our other churches and in our e-church. Then praise God, go ahead and give your offerings now and worship God and continue to thank him for all the good that he has shown and all the good that he will continue to show in your life. I believe this is the year of clarity, and I believe that each of you will find the path you're supposed to be in. So this is going to be an amazing year as you begin to walk in the path and understand this is where I'm supposed to be doing, that the Holy Spirit will say, hey, there it is right there. Walk in it. Walk in it. And I, I believe you're going to see more success than you've ever seen before in your life because you're walking down the plan, walking out the plan and the purpose of God for your life. Hey, if you're here today and you're not born again, I want to first of all start off by saying the devil is a loser. You should not be serving a loser. But I believe that loser is going to lose you today because he, he can't keep you. And if you're here right now, I want you to be bold as a lion, deliver from people and don't care what nobody say or think about you. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, be prepared to die whenever that time comes. Would you get out of your seats and come down here and we'll show you how to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. Secondly, if you're here and you want for some reason to recommit yourself to the Lord, then you can do that. Let this day be a day where the dome represents your Jehovah Jireh, a place where he turned it all around. Thirdly, if you want to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, ladies and gentlemen, it's a grace gift receive it. And then last but certainly not least, if God's calling you to join this church, World Changes Church International here in College Park or in other cities or countries, wherever you may be at a World Changes Church, it's time to get to the brook and be fed and allow your mind to be renewed and the Holy Spirit to change your life. So wherever you are, if you'll get your belongings, come on down. I'm going to ask the congregation to stand.
I need everybody in the congregation. We're going to turn it into a soul winning hall. I want you to turn to your left, right, front, behind. I want you to minister to the people who are near you. Ask them what I just asked you. If they need some help in coming down, would you help them come down? In Jesus' name, amen. you appreciate those who have come down front those of you who come down in our other churches we appreciate you stretch your hands this way father we thank you and we declare grace grace over their lives and we thank you lord that every mountain will be reduced to a plateau i pray in jesus mighty name that the blessing of god will so work through their lives they'll never be the same again and we declare the blessing over them now and everybody that agrees said, Amen. Amen. At this time, if you'll turn this way and follow our deacons to the prayer room, they're going to take you and minister to you and give you a biblical understanding of how to obtain and how to maintain what you came to receive in Jesus' name. Uh, <laughs> the countdown to Radical Women's Worth Conference has begun. Do you have your tickets? Don't miss the three-day conference, including the infamous Mentality Men's Panel. Just add it to the panel is Willie Moore Jr. of the Willie Moore Jr. Show and K.D. Bowles of Man Up Live. Text RADICAL to 51555 to grab your seat today or register in the lobby following service. For vendor opportunities, email RadicalWomen'sMinistry at gmail.com. For those who want to volunteer during the conference, there will be a volunteer meeting immediately after service in front of the dome up here. If you weren't able to participate or to complete our 48-week discipleship course, you now have the opportunity to do so. Classes are every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. in the member care conference room two. If you completed the course, stop by the communication desk to pick up your certificate of completion. Uh, get ready for radical night of worship in preparation for the Radical Women's Worth Conference. Join us Friday, February 21st at 7 o'clock p.m. at College Park in the chapel for worship and a transparent conversation on worth featuring Toya, uh, who she presided today. This is a free event and there's no registration required, so we look forward to seeing you there. 
Would you like to take your business to the next level? The Personal Finance Support, Support Ministry will host a financial business seminar on February 29th. Come out to listen to dynamic speakers as they share great insight on how to be a good steward and carry out the vision God has given uh, you for your business. So you can uh, get that information that's up there. And then finally, the EJB Scholarship Fund was started by my wife Taffy in memory of her mother, Ethel J. Bolton, to support young people in the pursuit of higher education. We will be hosting the EJB Scholarship Fund Gala at Gala, excuse me, on Tuesday, April 14th at 6 p.m. at the Fairmont, one of Atlanta's premier venues. Proceeds from the scholarship will provide financial support for deserving college-bound seniors for the 2020-2021 academic year. All these 2020s, we there, right? <laughs> for information on how to apply or to purchase tickets for this event, please stop by the EJB scholarship table located in the dome lobby or text 51555 to 2020 EJB. Your gifts will support the leaders of tomorrow in finding their purpose and fulfilling their dreams. It's an amazing feeling to be able to help support somebody finish their education and say to them, you owe me success. That's powerful, amen? Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the almighty God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Be blessed in every way, every day. I plead the blood of Jesus over your life, over your family, over your children, over everything that concerns you. God is perfecting right now, and we give you praise for that now in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great evening.